Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to the community conference tonight. Thank you very much for uh, taking time out of your busy schedules to come here tonight. Um, wonderful to see such a great uh, level of participation from the community. Uh, my name is Matthew Gordon and this is Al Halamish. And anyone who can say his name at the end of the night gets bonus points. Um, we're from Alsay. We've been engaged by uh, Yarra uh, Rangers Council uh, to uh, en engage the community around a vision for the municipality for 2036. Um, can you guys hear me okay at the back? Yep. I'll speak a little bit louder. Um, before we be, uh, get started, I might just welcome uh, Councillor to come up and welcome the crowd here. No, okay. No, thanks, yeah. Noel. Hi. Good evening, Noel Cliff. I'm the Councillor for Street. Hi, out there. Well, front page lady. Um, before we go on, I'd like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people, the original custodians of the land that we're in on now, and I'd like to also pay our respects to elders past and present. Thank you for coming tonight. This is fantastic. Um, you're going to get good results here at the consultant because whenever we do anything into the future, this side of the mountain really has got so many people who've got a million ideas. So please, tonight, thank you for coming and let it flow again. I know over the last three years we've done something similar to this and that's what's led to this area developing and coming up with more and more good ideas. So please, don't be shy. Do, join in and go, go mad. Thank you. Um, I then want to present some interesting information uh, about what consultation has happened so far over the last five or six weeks. Uh, and I want to show you some interesting data that's coming through. Uh, and then we're going to get onto this exercise of identifying and discussing community priorities and trying to figure out what are some actions that we can recommend to council. Uh, and the, the goal really is to recommend, make some recommendations that sit in the council plan for the next four years, but also set a compass or a vision for where we want to take this municipality for the next 20 years. Um, and then at the very end, we'll spend a little bit of time talking about where to from here, because this is actually just the start of the engagement, not the end. Um, and so we want to actually uh, continue to uh, reach out to you guys. Sound good? So why are we here? Uh, Council's decided that uh, in the next uh, period of time, prior to the next election, which is uh, on October 22 this year, we want to really understand what are the community priorities that uh, people across the municipality want to see the next council deliver on. Yeah. Um, but further than that, we want to then actually try and figure out, can we imagine what the council should like in the next 20 years? And that might be a little bit difficult for some of us to do because we might not necessarily see ourselves here in, in that period of time. So we might have to think about, well, what legacy do we want to leave? Perhaps for the younger generation as well. So you'll notice uh, at each table there's a, a computer. So there's going to be a bit of a process tonight. First of all, um, we're going to get everyone at each table to elect uh, a chair someone to help guide the conversation. Uh, and then we're going to also get you guys to elect someone to scribe the conversation. Okay, so we recommend whoever the scribe is is someone who is familiar with Microsoft Word because we've actually set up some templated um, uh, pages on each computer. And then what we're actually going to do is we're going to hear uh, the five most voted for ideas uh, that have been submitted on a, a public online forum over the last six weeks. And we're going to spend a little bit of time actually hearing what are some of the emerging ideas and issues that other people in the community have been coming up with. And we're going to ask ourselves, what can council do about this? And then what can the community do about this? And then we're very quickly going to flip over and try and figure out, well, what are the priorities that you guys have? What are the issues that you want council to focus on? And we'll spend a good chunk of the, the session actually focusing on what are the ideas of the people in the room here tonight. Okay? And then we'll shift on to the vision. Now the reason we've got computers is because we're actually going to take notes directly from each of these computers and publish them in a community report about exactly what happened here tonight. And we're going to release that in the next couple of working days. 
Um, so all of you are probably giving us your email address through the registration process. You'll actually get an email with a link to where you can find a report on what actually, what was the discussion that we had tonight. And it's these reports that we're having at each of these community conferences around the municipality that then feed into a recommendation to the, uh, the council. So it's really important that we actually capture everything that is said and spoken tonight in this document. So select your scribe carefully uh, and select your chairperson carefully as well because the chairperson will be responsible for making sure the conversation keeps moving. Does everyone understand that process? Yep, awesome. So um, we've been running uh, a forum uh, online, an Our Say forum. Um, and we've actually been collecting ideas from the community and actually asking the community to vote for those ideas. And I just wanted to show you some interesting data. Uh, this was a snapshot of what was happening on the forum as of about 4 p.m. this afternoon. So we've had about 246 people involved uh, so far and over 100, well, nearly 150 ideas submitted uh, through the online process. That's quite remarkable. Um, and it looks like lots and lots of people are, are looking at other people's ideas as well because there's lots of views. So we're actually seeing people coming to the site and viewing a whole range of different ideas coming across the community. Uh, this one is a little bit hard to see, um, but we'll make sure we share it in the report so you can see it. Um, but this is the, on the uh, left hand side, is uh, people that have been involved by age group. Uh, so, so far we've got about a third age, that big kind of yellow block there, about a third age between 26 and 40. Uh, the green block there is 41 to 60. Uh, the blue wedge, which is about, I don't know, 16, 17% over the age of, uh, yeah, over the age of 60. And we've only got a very thin wedge of people aged uh, between uh, 13 and 25. Anyone aged between 13 and 25 apart from myself in the room? Okay, just joking. Um, and we've also noticed on the other side a bias to female as well. We've got two thirds of people being involved so far are female. So that's what I'm seeing here is uh, young parents, um, middle ages getting engaged. And that's, that's really good to see. Next slide. So where are some of these uh, ideas coming from? So uh, this is uh, a bit of a map of where all the uh, ideas have been submitted from based on postcode. And what I can see here is that most hamlets and townships across the municipality are represented. That's, that's pretty good. Um, we've got a big concentration around the sort of the, the Elinda Park area, um, but we can go all the way out to Warburton East, um, through Lilydale and up into the valley. So. That's, uh, that's a really good spread. That's pretty impressive, actually, um, that we're getting all parts of all four corners uh, of the municipality. Uh, what I can also report is that every time someone makes a submission, they, they put a theme or a topic next to their submission. And so we, we've kind of captured all of those here. And it just shows the breadth of issues that the community are coming up with. Uh, just reading through. Uh, roads and infrastructure, local business, walking trails, public transport, electric cars, phone towers, public amenity, fire safety, uh, domestic violence, uh, climate change, uh, planning, look, a whole range of issues. And I look at this and I go, wow, there's a lot of different things to think about when planning for the future. Yeah. And so some of these, I'm sure a lot of these things will come up tonight in your deliberation as well. Okay, so this afternoon uh, at about four o'clock, um, we had, uh, this was the leading idea on the forum. Um, unfortunately, it's not the leading idea anymore, but we'll, we'll get to that idea in a moment. Uh, but it's from uh, Belinda S. on behalf of Lockie. Is Lockie or Belinda here tonight? Would you like to come up and present? <laughs> Lockie, you, you got the floor? Um, this is Lockie and I'm Belinda and uh, we would like to see Yarra Ranges Council prioritising play over the next 20 years. Um, our idea which we've submitted is a new playground for Upway Central and we would like to see this inform Council's four year plan. Uh, the benefits of a new playground include a place for young people in our community to be excited about going to, a community gathering place in the centre of town, 
somewhere to socialise and enjoy time with your family and friends and hopefully to make some new friends. It would be a great draw card for the Upway Main Street and encourage people to spend more time in our local community. It would also encourage people to get outdoors and get active. I noticed today that yesterday Yarra Rangers Council posted on social media 14 must-see local parks and playgrounds in the urban region. Unfortunately, the closest to Upway was Montrose Recreation Reserve. I worked out that that would be a 24-minute drive without traffic or just a convenient 3-hour and 22-minute walk. <laughs> we want to be able to see a must-see local playground within our community, so we are asking Council to please plan for play in Upway. If you haven't already, please vote for a new playground for Upway Central, or if you have already voted, please add a supportive comment. Thank you. Thank you, Belinda, and thank you, Lockie. I really appreciate you coming out down tonight. El, do you want to, actually, we've got another idea that also is uh, leading. Um, it's uh, sitting on about 122 votes, and it's from Tyler. Sorry, is Tyler here tonight? No? I thought we might deal with both of these issues at the same time. Uh, I'll read it on behalf of Tyler. My name is Tyler, and I'm 10 years old, and I love to ride skateboards. I'd like to talk to you about building a skate park in Wurri Yalik on Symes Road at the park. I think we need a skate park in Wurri Yalik because Mount Evelyn and Yarra Junction are too far away and get very crowded with older kids uh, and we don't uh, get a turn. Please, could you discuss this proposal at the next council meeting as there are many kids in Wurri Yalik that would think this is awesome. There is enough room to build one at the park and it's not on a main road. It is a great spot and would make living in Murray Alec even better. It would also uh, would be a cool spot to meet your friends and have a skate after school and on weekends. Tyler M. Tyler's an eight-year-old, so <laughs> of course, Tyler. Um, tonight we're going to actually uh, turn over to the CEO, uh, Glenn Patterson from Yarra Rangers, uh, actually to respond to these uh, these ideas. Glenn, I'll hand over to you. Terrific. Really quickly, a couple of minutes. Um, both brilliant ideas, so um, great to see you here tonight um, to put these forward. Certainly, in relation to the first idea, I suppose we like to take a strategic approach and look at the whole of the municipality and see how all of these ideas sort of fit in. Um, certainly, our open space and recreation strategy, um, and on this particular item, there's the second suggestion here, the BMX skate um, plan, which was actually endorsed by Council on Tuesday night this week. Um, both incorporate these as priority areas, so we think they're both fantastic ideas. Um, the evidence on the first one around play space is, is well and truly in. So as you say, I think you can probably mount an argument to say this part of the municipality deserves that kind of investment we're talking about. Um, and they're great opportunities to engage everyone in the community, um, basically in terms of the location, the design, the sort of functionality you want to see out of the kind of play space. But our experience with those regional or sub-regional play spaces that we've created, for example at Montrose, which is the first of those, more recently at Yarra Glen, and another one we're planning at the moment that's in design for Wildensale Lake, which has attracted state government investment as well, which is really important, so the state is very much on the same wavelength around these things, is that they're great um, meeting places, they're social attractors as you say, and Yarra Glen, really this year, was actually the number one attraction at Yarra Glen, the regional playground there, on TripAdvisor, so that's the kind of impact they can have. When you talk to traders in Yarra Glen since that facility was built, they talk about a noticeable uplift in, um, in their trade as well. So there's a whole range of social and economic benefits from those being put in place. So fantastic idea. Very happy to have a conversation with you about that. And in relation to the BMX skate uh, plan, which Council endorsed on Tuesday night this week, one of the actions, the good news for Tyler there, is that one of the actions in there is to investigate another facility. We actually have nine skate parks around Yarra Rangers, many of which have been installed in the last six or seven years, so there's been quite a splurge of investment there. But one of the actions in that plan is to actually investigate installing one in Seville or Wurri Allen, so that's good news for Tyler. So in his absence, I can say we're right behind that idea as well. Thank you. We're going to um, spend six minutes on each of these, um, on the, on these conversation topics, and the first three minutes of that conversation we want you to think about this theme. You know, one theme was around um, parks, the other theme around skate parks, but also this overarching theme around you know, parks and recreation. How does that actually fit into what we're doing inside this council? And I want you to think, for the first three minutes, what are some of the things that council can be doing about these things? And for the next three minutes, what are some things that the community can be doing about these things? 
I'm going to time you, so I'm going to tell you, you've got three minutes, and I want you at your table, the scribes are going to be writing these down, but you guys at a table conversation, first off, what are some of the things that council can be doing about this particular issue, and then, and then we'll shift to the next one, okay? So I'm going to give you three minutes, parks and rec, um, skate parks and parks, uh, have a go at that at your table, you've got three minutes. All right, we're going to bring it back to order. We've got, um, we'd like to talk about the third uh, idea. Now, at four o'clock, this idea had 93 votes. Do we know how many votes it's got now? Something in the order of about 140, I think. There's been a rally uh, in the last two hours, so it's actually leading, uh, leading the charge. Uh, so by rights, we'll, we'll be treating it as a top idea at the next meeting, uh, potentially. Uh, but I invite, is Katie Cookaburra in the room? But we've got a representative. Okay. So we've got Katie Cookabar is actually. Do you want to come over here, Mary? Katie Cookabar is actually Mary Wiking, who couldn't make it tonight. So we've got Mary Mason okay. uh, to uh, present on her behalf. Thank you, Mary. And I'm the president of Dandenong uh, Ranges Tourism. Um, Mary wrote that tourism is one of the major industries in the Yarra Ranges, and yet the Yarra Ranges Council doesn't even have a tourism button on its website. No one visiting the Yarra Ranges Council website would know what jewels exist in the area. This raises the question of how committed the Council is to tourism. Tourism, up, bring, tourism brings in millions of dollars and has the potential to increase to billions thereby providing employment, support and safeguard for the environment, improvement of infrastructure and support for the communities. Everyone benefits. Council needs to educate itself on the potential possibilities rather than be obstructive and inhibitive. And if I could just mention there, we actually have a huge and a very laudable process at the moment to support people who um, are disabled in the community but bed and breakfasts aren't allowed to put a sink in the main room so that the person can fill up a kettle. They have to go into the bathroom. That's how contradictory the policy is. There is a major gap in the council's development department, and that is tourism. Council needs to work and be seen to work cooperatively with businesses, communities and individuals towards a common purpose of making their arranges a place of great beauty, opportunity, and a wonderful place to live. And I would say that Glenn is on the tourism committee for the Yarra Ranges and does a lot in that regard for that. But this is really dealing with our local area in the Dandenongs. Okay, thanks Mary and Mary. Okay, Katie Cookaburra. Um, as Mary said, um, I suppose it's really recognised both from a state and local government level that tourism is a key economic driver of um, activity within the state of Victoria. It's called the visitor economy, that's how it's referred to. Um, I think Council puts its money where its um, mouth is um, through a partnership agreement that Council has with Yarra Rangers Tourism to the tune of nearly half a million dollars a year, so that's a substantial investment. I think the issue is that in, a, in, a, in an issue of an environment of scarce resources, it's about where you actually allocate your priorities. So I think there's an issue in there which we need to explore a little bit further, which is about where the relative uh, priorities lie with the sort of, if you like, Yarra Valley part of the municipality and Dandong Ranges. So there's some, there's some, I suppose, some perceptions around the respective sort of priorities and activities between the two of those. Very happy to look at some of those functionality issues that are spoken about there. The, um, our people are already looking at um, some better, stronger links on our website to the Our Rangers Tourism websites. Um, that's something to be done in the next matter of days. Um, certainly in relation to, what was the other question? Oh, yeah, we actually have dedicated staff um, that deal with visitor economy and tourism as well. So that's probably just a, a something we can sort of talk to you further about. Um, and you'll be pleased to know that developing a vibrant economy is one of the five key pillars um, in our council strategic plan. So this is recognised as being really important and the visitor economy is one of our top four sectors um, in the business um, of the So we certainly recognise the benefit of it. It's 
probably just about how it plays out at the local level and the perception of operators in terms of how we invest and where we choose to spend our money directly and through the ROA's tourism. So I'm very happy to have a conversation about that. Thanks Mary. So a quick pulse check, I just wanted to see, we've had a couple of ideas shared, and just very briefly, what are some of the, the themes that we're hearing at the different tables, just so we can share them around the room, what are some of the things that we're hearing uh, at the different tables? So having the opportunity to talk directly to, to people involved in a particular area, for example tourism or planning, um, if we had the opportunity to more, meet more regularly. Um, and face-to-face -face would be an advantage because communication could be difficult. We're obviously hearing people are passionate about the smaller areas in the Shire and Council's still not seeing the forest for the trees in putting money towards some of the smaller townships and suburbs rather than the, the big ones because they keep hearing so much about Lilydale and Churnside Park and this and that. We understand there's tourism that exists quite extensively in some of the areas but smaller places and there are many where they need the neighbourhood themes working for them with money being spent. So needing to look also at what is the current demand, what's the capacity of these smaller areas to actually deliver on what people want, what is already happening in these areas that is not fitting potentially with why people have moved to the area, why people come to the area, and really needing to manage some of that demand and flow. Um, it's fantastic to want to keep bringing people to where you live. You live here for a reason because it's amazing, but maybe there needs to be a little bit more of a bigger picture view about the best places for some of these opportunities. That, that we're getting overloaded with tourism. So although tourism is very, very um, important, we don't have the infrastructure, the roads, or the ability to widen the roads uh, in order to continue more tourism, more tourism in this particular area. So. Uh, we live in one of the most fire prone areas in the world and there's peaking, there's, there's got to be a tipping point that we hit where we realise, okay, where do we press stop on increasing and pushing more tourism into yeah. this area for so the safety and for the uh, residents' amen amenity as well. Yeah. The so area any draw that card, not necessarily just mm -hmm. tourism, but it's all yes. that yes. stuff. And the environment, the yeah. impact on the environment, the reason why people come here. Well, part of the reason why we're actually here, and that is listening to the community and um, uh, building what they want. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of uh, lip service about um, going through that process and ticking boxes, but it's so much better if we can actually work together and build it from the ground up with the community um, behind it. Okay, so the fourth uh, top idea at the moment is from uh, Lou. Uh, is Lou in the room? Nope. Okay, I'll read it out on his behalf. A new Great Forests National Park that provides quality and diverse experiences for locals and tourists alike and also protects and enhances biodiversity, water quality across the Yarra Ranges. So a big environmental uh, idea there. I'll invite Glenn to respond. Thanks Matt. Well, I suppose that conversation we're just having is a nice lead in to this. Um, what I'd say is we all recognise that the Yarra Range is just a place that has a, an amazing world class natural resource base. That's recognised in our strategic direction, a lot of the investment we make to, in order to enhance and protect that. Um, so I think the question probably is a case of you know, what actions do we want to take? This particular proposal is something that's outside our remit. This is, this is for other levels of government to determine whether that particular proposal does or doesn't happen. Having said that, what kind of actions do you expect the council to be taking or do we want to see the council taking in order to achieve those sort of environmental outcomes that you're talking about? There's a huge amount of public land I mean, Yarra Ranges that is either controlled by the federal, state or local government. Even in our space, we have a huge amount of open space, bushland reserves and other pieces of um, native vegetation over which we have control. How do you think we should be managing that? What are some of the other issues associated with you know, water quality, biodiversity, those sorts of things? So I suppose the question is, in all of that, appreciate the passion that's in the room for this particular um, issue. What are your expectations of Council in relation to actions to support the sort of environmental outcomes that we'll see um, when there's you know, significant pressures on that um, as we see emerging in the current um, environment? Okay, um, so we're going to do one last idea before we hand it back over to you guys.
Um, we've got uh, coming fifth um, an idea from Jenny Stroh. Jenny, did you want to come up and check? Yep, yeah, no worries. Um, I'd like to advocate for um, food plantings throughout the townships, ranging from veggies in planter boxes along with ornamentals to fruit trees along the road verges or vacant land. Okay. Imagine tapping the abundance of horticultural knowledge and creative know-how in this amazing soil and climate zone we inhabit. Let's educate and feed our community. Plenty of towns across the planet have been successful with these ideas. Engage our local economy, build community, and expand ways of managing risk. And I mean, these ideas reflect what's going on incredibly well in the hills already with people like the Hills Food Frontier and Flame Garden in Tacoma. These are examples of fantastic projects already. And the projects in the kitchen gardens in schools that we have. Um, so uh, this is really in regards to healthy food and education, trying to contribute to reducing the obesity and, and uh, diabetes epidemics that we have. So that's it. Thank you. Um, yeah, fantastic idea. We're getting a very steady stream of these kind of requests. So for us it's early days in terms of how we're actually approaching this. As you mentioned, we've got people who are doing work with the schools, we're doing work within the region, within the eastern region on this topic. Um, we've got in our space, if you like in the public realm, we've got about four or five community gardens that we first uh, the council's actually has some jurisdiction over. Um, we've got some nature strip guidelines which have some, don't really have any constraints contained within them about what sort of plantings might occur on nature strips to support this kind of thinking as well. So there's probably not as many constraints as we think around pursuing this sort of idea. Um, but as I say, we're very early in the piece really in terms of making sure that we've got the right policy settings and the right sort of approach that we harness this kind of um, thought. So certainly very consistent with all our ideas about um, having more sustainable communities and communities that um, look up themselves more sustainable in the future. Um, we believe in that and but we're I suppose looking for some solutions as well. So if you can turn your mind to um, both on public land, on private land, there's a number of cafes, for example I know around the municipality that actually engage in this as well, so it's a private and public land issue. You know, what should some of the do's and don'ts be around that and how might we adjust um, how we go about setting out constraints to ensure that this kind of thing is facilitated in, in a greater way than, than it has been to date. Right. So the next exercise, we're going to spend a lot more time answering this question, which is discuss what you want to see Council focus on for the next four years. Now the way we're going to do this is we're actually going to ask each person around each table will have the opportunity to state what their focus is. Okay, so you'll have six or seven different focuses on each table. But here's the rub. Then I want you to deliberate on a, as a table and see if you can identify a priority that encompasses all those areas, that steps it up and thinks a bit more strategically. All right. Now it's going to be difficult because you're actually going to have to work together almost as a, a board of directors or even a, a mini council and try and figure out, all right, given all the different focus areas that each of us want to prioritise, what's the priority that sits above all of those? What's something that encompasses all of those? Okay, does that make sense? Now it's going to be tricky and you might not get there, okay? <coughs> so that's, that's your challenge. So I'm going to give you... 20 minutes to do that. So for the first part of the conversation, spend a minute or two, each of you nominating the particular focus area that you want council to focus on for the next four years, and then leave plenty of time at the end to deliberate and try and figure out what all of you want to prioritise as one thing, okay? All right, time starts.
Thanks, guys. Um, I'm going to ask uh, a representative from each table to stand and uh, report the one big idea from part two of that conversation um, to the room. We should be looking at the un unique needs of this particular diverse community and that we need to care for the vulnerable groups. We haven't really talked enough about that. The vulnerable groups within this community. Yeah, we, we struggled to find an idea for each member of the table, I guess because we kind of got one idea and then decided that was the idea that we wanted to focus on right. like, straight away. You guys should run for council. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so the idea we came up with essentially resolved around the idea of a community-led, community-empowered um, council activities. You know, the, the community taking on some of the roles that council might provide. Um, it brings in the using community expertise um, it brings in encouraging community groups to do their own thing in a sense, to, to make a difference themselves. So not wait for the for a council to do it or the state or someone to provide funding for it, it's actually go out and get it. So, uh. With council's help by way of making changing the rules and uh, changing the zoning, uh, build this amazing aged care facility. Apparently we have 42% um, of uh, people over 65 in the Shire of Yarra Ranges, so this is a very great need. Um, but we're, we're in this, we're going to have um, indigenous planting and um, beautiful paths that are, uh, what are the paths called? Permeable, Permeable paving, so that um, it helps with runoff and toxins and all of that. Um, we're going to have, allow animals in it, so that people can bring their dogs and their cats, and um, which is, is very good for people, and, and a very strong sense of community. And <laughs> so we had community and aged care, and the environment and community activities as well as, as um, dogs. And um, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So we're going to have this amazing facility that encompasses all the um, ideas of building community and that and, and we'd have, it wouldn't just be elderly people that would be in it. We had a similar kind of idea about building uh, community spaces, but with a focus on, on um, the needs of people across their age span. So, for example, it might be a community house or a library space that is used by people of all ages, and making sure that there's opportunities for young people as well as older people to engage culturally in the community, as well as perhaps sporting or um, other activities that they're interested in. Um, sort of overriding all of those those issues as some of the, the um, the planning issues of infrastructure, um, such as parking and those concerns that are very real in the community, need to be taken into account across um, the planning of all of, of, all of these um, ideas. We need to make sure that people with disability are taken into account. Um, we need to make sure that, that people whose voices aren't usually heard are brought out and heard within the community. Um, and we need to have um, transparent, transparency with, with council, make sure that we have an efficient council that um, can assist community groups with their planning and making sure that those practical issues are taken into account. Okay, so our statement is that we would like council to recognise, protect and value our unique natural environment, our individual township characteristics, our active and passionate communities and our future aspirations. Beautiful. First of all, uh, thank you everyone for uh, deliberating around that, thinking about those. Those were all really powerful. Um, you know, for your visions, and in fact, I think you've already started to step into the space that I'm about to take you into, which is now we're actually going to think about even further into the future. So in four years, we had some really state, really powerful statements that we can already start to latch onto and kind of see that in the in the near future. Um, but now we're actually going even further out to 20 years. And so before we do that, we've been doing a lot of talking at our tables, and sometimes when there's a lot of talking. There's a lot of noise, and it's hard to do a little bit of our own self-reflection on what do we actually start to see at that point in time. And so in a second, we're going to, in, in a minute actually, we're going to start thinking about thinking 20 years from now, ideally, how would you like Yarra Ranges to be? So thinking 20 years from now, ideally, how would you like Yarra Ranges to be? And so if you imagine yourself 20 years from now, so it's 2036, and, um, and it's 20 years into the future, think of yourself in that point, what does Yarra Ranges feel like? What is, what, is it, what is it as a place, you know? And whether you're there or maybe you're not there, um, but what does it feel like as a place? What is it as a place? Uh, 
Alrighty, I'm going to uh, I'm going to call it in. It's uh, one minute to eight on my clock, and my job tonight was to keep you on time. And the sense that I get from the room is that you're all very quite visionary, and we could do this for another couple of hours. Um, but uh, unfortunately, we have to wrap up the event because we said we'd finish by eight o'clock. But before we finish up, I just want to uh, uh, report about where to from here. Um, so. Uh, just quickly, for scribes, could just press save, just so we've got all that. <laughs> we'll be uh, we'll be collecting all that information, and we'll be compiling it into a report for this particular event. And then we're going to do the same again for the next two events. And then we're actually going to combine all the data from all uh, parts of the municipality into one big report that then gets tabled to the new council after the election. Uh, so thank you very much for helping us write it. Um, the conversation still goes on. For another uh, two and a half weeks, we're going to keep this online forum up. So some of the ideas that you've heard about tonight, uh, some of your own ideas, your own visions for all the future of this municipality, we can keep that conversation going further and see what other people have to say about that. So on our say, you can post and register your idea, you can vote on ideas and comment on ideas and keep the discussion going so it doesn't have to end tonight. And there's the, uh, there's the web address for those who don't know. And finally, um, thank you all for uh, your work tonight and thanks for going along with this, uh, this workshop. I hope, you, um, I hope you got something out of it. I hope you felt heard and understood and your ideas value. Um, we're always looking for ways to improve the format. Um, and so what I'd love to do if you had a couple of moments just at the end, we've got some yellow sticky notes um, on the tables. Just on the scale of 1 to 10, 1 being that wasn't very good, didn't have a good experience, 10 being you guys are awesome. <laughs> um, just, uh, just note what number you'd like to rate the session and also maybe just a sentence as to why you rated it with that number. Uh, that information would be really useful to us. But that's all from us. So I want to thank you very much. I want to thank uh, council staff for sticking around tonight and the councillors for coming down and especially for all you um, for taking time out of your busy schedules to help us out. So thank you very much and have a wonderful day.